Hi guys, it's Katie here again from Bella Creativa. Um, it's been ages since I've done a video, so I might be a little rough, but let's see how I go. I have been making my own little Altoid tins, and these are some examples. So um, I know that Altoid tins are really easily um, or available in other parts of the world, but in Australia, you can get them but they're not cheap um they're at least five dollars each and then i would need to pay shipping and i'd also have to wait and patience is not my virtue so i decided to make my own um i was starting to do a little draft design because i joined the graphics fairy premium membership site which is brilliant by the way and I'll try and remember to put a link down below. But in a lot of her printables that are on the Graphics Fairy, they have these um, Altoid tin backgrounds. And I, as soon as I saw them, I loved them and I wanted to make some Altoid tins. But of course, I couldn't easily get hold of them. And then, just the other day, Tracy Fox um, showed um, a printable, a digi print, um, digital, blah, 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 a printable <laughs> of these little... Um, um, toppers she calls them um, tin toppers for Altoid tins and I definitely wanted to make some Altoid tins um, when I saw those so this is what they look like they fit perfectly anyway so I made my own Altoid tins um, they're not tins they're cardboard but they cost me next to nothing to make and I can decorate them with scraps. And so aren't they fabulous? I think they're gorgeous. So they just open up like this and they've got little hinges on the back. Um, so this one's the Tracy Fox one. This one's also a Tracy Fox one. And I have um, just put some paper around it. It's got little hinges. And this one is also a Tracy Fox one. Isn't that cute? Safety pins. <laughs> And again, I have just put some scrap, uh, it's just scrap paper that I've used and it just opens up like that. It's exactly the same size as an Altoid tin. And um, yeah, it opens and closes really nicely. I probably should have stuck that down a little bit better. And um, this was actually my prototype and I have created um, a set of SVG files and a set of printables so that if you wanted to make these you could yourself. I think that a gift card would fit perfectly in here. Um, so great little ideas for gift cards with Christmas coming up, I know, or money. <laughs> I think they'd be good for that. But anyway, this one, I just used some Atlas paper. Usually for my prototype, I don't use anything too fancy, but I do love Atlas paper. So I made this one, and inside it, I have made a little accordion book that fits in there perfectly. So let me just pull it out, and I can show you. Uh, again, this is just out of Atlas paper, nothing fancy and it's just tied up with a bit of seam binding but you could put any closure on it that you want Let's pop that over there and so then it just opens out like this on this side and then on this side it looks like this so it's got some little pockets i'll pull that little paper clip off it's got a little pocket here this is just a little tuck spot, I've got a little belly band in here, um, another little side, a side pocket here, another little tuck spot, a little corner pocket here and another little bottom pocket on that side. And then on this side we have another little long pocket here and under here I've created some little doors that open out, isn't that <laughs> hilarious? This is um, from the Graphics Fairy. So then um, I just held that all together with a paper clip, but of course you could use um, magnets or Velcro or anything like that. Uh, there's another little pocket here. And I'll just pop that back in there. Came out so easily, does not want to go in so easily. And then I've just left a couple of spots that you can put a photo in. Now this would be a, a wallet size picture that's just trimmed down slightly so you can easily get wallet size photos on here and you could definitely get sprockets on there. It's another little corner pocket hiding under here 
another little belly band and at the end here another little pocket that I've just slid some things into. So this was my prototype and um, I had a ball, so much fun and um, an, an, an excellent way to use up for your scraps. So I thought we would make one together today. So let's pop that little guy in there for now, put that in there and put this to the side. So I have created um, an, an SVG file to make these and that's what I use. So if you were to um, download this from my Etsy store and I'll put the link in the description box below, um, you would get one file and it's got everything you need to make um, the Altoid tin and also all the little pockets and the piece to make the accordion book. Uh, if you were to download the printable templates, you'll get two files. One is an A4 one and one is a letter one. So you just print out the one that um, suits you. And the reason that I've done it that way is because to be the perfect size, you don't want to fit it to the page. You want it to print it true to size. So um, you can either use the A4 or the letter one and print that out. So if you were to purchase the printable templates, which are also available in my Etsy store, you'd get this little um, sort of guide and then on the back it shows you a picture of the three pages that you would get. So the first page is the pieces, you might not be able to see that very well on here, um, but the, each of the pieces that you need to make the tin and some pockets. This is the accordion book and some more pockets. And then the third page is all the mats. If you want to mat um, everything you can, including all the pockets, okay? And then the printout itself looks like this. So this is the first page which is this one here. So this has got the writing on it to tell you exactly what piece, which piece it is. So this is the hinge, it's the belly band, it's a small long pocket, a large long pocket, the tin lid and the tin base, and then the tin sides. And so all you need to do is um, print this out and you can print it directly onto your cardstock and cut around it, or you can print it out onto cardstock and then trace around it like a template. So they um, are all ready to go and you, you could either ink along where the dot, dotted lines are, which is where you would um, fold it, or you could print it on the reverse of the paper that you're using and then you wouldn't see it at all, although this one you would, so you'd probably ink it. Or you could create a template. And then the last page is all the mats, and this little um, diagram here tells you which mat is for which thing. Okay, so that is exactly what we're going to be using today. And I have already cut my pieces out. So let's go. Um, I'm using this cardstock. It's cream cardstock by Recollections. It's 65 pound or 176 GSM. I wouldn't use anything too thick because it will make it more difficult to um, open and close these little guys. Okay, so here's all my pieces, and in the description box below, I will write um, down a list of all the pieces that I've used, so you don't need to write them down. So these are all my pieces that I've already cut out for my little Altoid tin. So I've got two of the top pieces and two of the bottom pieces for my tin. Then I've got some bunch of mats. And then I have two of the um, skinny um, sides and that goes with the top piece because the top of it is obviously bigger, just marginally bigger than the small um, than the bottom piece. Okay, so then this one is for the bottom and that goes with that. So I just like to keep them aside. And then I have two little hinges. Okay, so let's get some glue going and the first thing I'm going to do is once I've folded all of these little bits these little teeth in and this little section here I'm just going to glue this piece to this piece using this little tab so let's do that oh my glue is pretty runny <clears throat> fresh set of glue okay so I'm just going to line that up along here and glue it down now the way that I make the base is, and the way I make the top are exactly the same. So I think I might just make one and then um, I'll do the other one off screen. Okay, 
So those two are joined together. I'm just going to leave those there to dry. And then I'm going to do the same here. So I'll put some glue on this little tab here. Oh, I'm just going to squash that out because that came out super fast. Okay, and then I'm just going to line those up like so. Get out my handy um, wiper and wipe up all of that excess glue. Make sure it's really well stuck down. And I've probably stuck that the wrong way I have. All right, so we're going to turn it this way now because what I want to do is, it really doesn't matter which way you turn it, but I want this piece, I'm going to glue this piece down onto here and I want to cover up that little tab. So I'm just going to put some glue on here. And I'm going to bend this over against the way that I had in mind, but it doesn't matter. I'm just going to glue that down like so. I might get out a bone holder and make sure it's really well stuck down. So I think I might show you the base because it's bigger and it's easier to see. But as I say, making the top will be exactly the same. Okay, so I'm just going to fold that over and then I'm going to try and make sure these line up at the top. They're not perfect, but um, nothing ever is when I do it on camera. Nothing's ever perfect anyway, is it? It's handmade, that's the point. Okay, so then we have that guy there. I'm making sure it's stuck down. Okay. So now this guy here is for my bottom, so let's not get confused. This is for the bottom of my tin. So what I'm going to do is just run along here, the, each of these little, each of these little teeth. I should probably wait for this to dry. There's a big blob of glue in there. I'm just going to um, shape this a little bit. It's still a bit damp, the glue, but we want it to bend. So I'm giving it a little, a little helping hand. Okay, so then I'm going to put some glue on each of these teeth. This is not the right um, glue bottle for the job. It's just coming out way too fast. This one might be better. It's way too much glue on that tiny little tooth. All right, let's try again. Okay, I'm just going to run along here and put a blob of glue on each of my teeth. And down the side. Okay. So what I like to do is have this join on the side. So I, that's where I usually start with my join on the side here. This is my bottom piece, and I'm just going to pop it on that on those teeth, and um, sort of pull it up, making sure that they're stuck in together. Uh, really well so that this piece here is nice and close to the edge so this is the trickiest part um, is attaching these little guys and I have to say that I've been getting better at it so then I'm just pulling these teeth around sliding them underneath easier said than done I'm trying to get those that gap up as close as I can, it's a couple of teeth hanging out. Come on, I don't want to behave. Okay, I'm pushing that up as close as I can to that bottom base piece and getting trying to get it to stick down. Wipe up my gluey mess again. I'm gonna make sure that I'm as close as I can get. I would not normally make it out of um, this light coloured cardstock, but I know that it's easy to see on the screen, so that's why I am. So then I'm going to slide these over here. But the black is definitely um, a great way to do it. You can see what tiny pieces of cardstock I'm using, which is really good for all my scrappy bits of cardstock, of which I have a lot. Okay, I'm just going to wipe up that bit of excess glue. 
feel like it needs to be a bit closer along there. Like so. It's looking pretty good. Okay, and then I'm going to bring this one here around. I seem to have run out of glue a bit here. I'm going to bring this one with the tab around first. Right around that corner nice and tight. Sorry about that squeaking <laughs> cardstock noise on my finger. Okay, well this is looking pretty good. And then I'm going to put some glue on my tab here. And a bit of glue on the edge of this one. Make sure I've got some glue on there. And then we're just going to bring this little guy around here. Like so. Up nice and tight. And then squash it down. Now it does overlap a tiny little bit here. So it's up to you whether you want to um, cut that off. I have allowed that little <clears throat> overlap just in case you don't get it up. It's, um, you know, it's better to have too much than not enough. You can cut it off, but you can't add it. Okay. Looking good. All right, turn it over. Then I'm just going to make sure that all my teeth are stuck down. And this one here. So, something's happening next door. I don't know if you can hear it, but I can. There's lots of laughter, so that's good. <laughs> okay. Just stick those down. And that is our base. So now what I'm going to do is just... Um, I'm, I've got another piece of my, my bottom of my base and I'm going to glue it on straight on top of these teeth. So that tooth is still flying around. Right. So then I might put this one away and I'm going to put some glue on my base. Coming out super fast, this glue. Okay. And then this bottom section here, I'm just going to pop on top like so. Line it up, make sure it's not overhanging anywhere. And then wipe up my glue. It's oozing out everywhere. Excuse me. Okay. And that's my base. Okay, so now I'm just going to let that, put that aside to dry. So I'm just going to pop something heavy on there. Might just push it around a little bit. Yep, got a bit more glue coming out from that. Gonna let that dry. While that's drying, let's do some of our. So as I say, I would make the top in exactly the same way, except I'm using this skinnier little section to make the top. All right. So first of all, I'm going to glue this little section down here on both of those, and then I'm just going to ease it around my top on those teeth. All right. But I won't. Uh, we won't do it for a second time because that's a bit boring. Let's have a look at the um, little accordion book. So this is completely optional. You don't need to make a little accordion book, but I thought I would show you how. So this is the accordion piece. I've cut out two of them, so I will have eight pages, but of course it's front and back, so that's 16 pages. Um, it's got a tab here to join them together, but I don't need this tab on this one, so I'm going to trim that off. I'm going to get my cutting board to do that because... Straight line cutting is not my thing. Okay, so I'm just going to line up the, my score line here. So mine was put there by my Cricut when I cut this out using the SVG. Um, again, even though I um, did that on the cutting board, 
particularly straight. Never mind, I can fix it up later. So then all I need to do is attach this guy to this guy. I'm still not happy with that. Okay, out comes this. It's Okay, I'll tell you what, I'll put a bit of ink on it, you'll never know. So I have printed, the, uh, um, cut this out of cardstock, you could do it straight out of your scrapbook paper, even better if it's double sided, <laughs> then you don't need to mat it. Um, but because I've created mats, which you don't have to use, but because I've created them, I thought I would show you how I would use them. Okay, so I'm just going to line these two up. I'm going to pull this one over on top of this one and sort of see if I can get them pretty much in line. And give it a smoosh. I'm going to stuff on the back of there. And that one's stuck down so I'm going to cover this up with a mat so you won't see it but in the event that you if you had done this out of um, double-sided um, scrapbook paper you can just cover this tab up with a pocket and then you know you would never know that it was there okay so there's my book the first thing I do is fold it up and decide what my front cover is going to be so that um, I don't forget. So this is going to be my front. Okay, so now all I need to do is go along and mat each of these little guys. So I've already cut out my mats. These are these ones here. I've got 16 mats and I have used printables from the Graphics Ferry from the premium membership site, aren't they cute? And I have already inked them up around with my vintage photo. So what I'll do is I'll go and mat all of these front and back so that you don't have to watch me do that. And I'll also finish off my little top um, of my outer tin. So then when we come back, we can um, just put some little pockets on here and finish off our little outer tin with those mats. Okay, so I'll see you in a moment. Okay guys, I'm back and I have, while I was gone, gone ahead and attached all of my little mats to my accordion book. So doesn't that look sweet? I think it's beautiful. So this is my front cover and I'm, so I don't want to put anything on there, I really have to remember, but I've already cut out all these little pockets. So these little pockets also come in the templates and they also come in the SVG files. All these teensy tiny little pockets. So I've cut the pockets out of um, paper. It's I think 120 GSM paper. And then I have um, folded them on all the little um, fold lines. And I have inked around it and then I've attached a mat to that. Uh, I want, did it with this, this way so I could show you what it looks like with the mat attached. In this one, I cut the actual um, pockets themselves straight out of the paper. So here you can see um, it's got no, no um, edging on it. I've just cut it straight out of the paper. So you could do that as well. Um, you don't have to mat them. I just thought I'd point that out. So then um, I've just got um, two of each thing. So I've got two of the bigger pockets, um, two of these little pockets, two of the corner pockets, so I just cut it out of two of everything. I have two of the wider pockets, one facing each way, and then two of the narrow long pockets. And so on each side, I'm just going to put one of those. So I'm going to put a narrow pocket on here. I might put one of these on here. I might put one of these on this side. Um, I need a corner pocket. And I need one of these big pockets. So maybe that one. Okay, so I'm just going to spread them out and, oh, and I've got little belly bands, teensy tiny little belly bands too, so then I can put one of these on here as well. Might go with this one. So if I put that there, maybe I'll put that one there. I don't want to put them on the same paper. Um, I might put that one on there. Put this corner pocket on here. Put that one on here. What do you think? 
yeah so then I'll just grab my glue this is such a quick easy little project and so much fun look at these teensy tiny pockets they're so tiny so I just put some glue on my little tabs and flip it over and pop it on I love it because I don't have to measure anything it's all sorted out for me and of course I've used too much glue so I just um, wipe up my excess glue and then I'm going to put this little guy on here this is um, then I can just embellish it and I'm thinking that some butterflies are going to come into the embellishing oh, again I've used too much glue line that up wipe up that bit of glue there Katie gosh okay a little belly band this little guy here maybe and on there and then on there and put that one on here and just center it press it down again um with these the tiny tabs it's really hard not to use too much glue this one at the end see how easy this is um, so there is also a little insert in the, um, the in the templates either the SVG file or the printable templates that you can also print out um, or you can make up your own little tags and things to go in there so that little guy goes there and we have these two last ones here I'll put this one here actually yeah let's just do it let's just do it Oop. just needed to, my glue is really <laughs> running fast it's from a brand new bottle of glue so it's it hasn't sort of um it hasn't got old it's still running really quickly why aren't you folding over Slot that little guy down on here. So you can use whatever um, paper you want to use. I'm actually just using copier paper as my, um, I've just printed onto copy paper and it just helps to keep it um, from not getting too thick. That's my, that's my feeling anyway. And I have this one on the end, why not? down on there like so and that's that one side done so now I'm going to flip over to this side now this is my cover so I don't want to put anything on there I'm going to put my bulldog clip on there to remind me not to stick anything on there okay so I might put this guy on here let's just do it and pop that one down on here you probably don't need to watch me do this but I'm having so much fun <laughs> and then um, I'll put this one somewhere it's only going to take me a minute these are such quick little projects so quick. Um, where do I want to put you? I'll put you over here. Bottom pocket. Um, I might put this one on here. Like so. I mean, you could put a pocket on every one if you wanted to. I've just left a couple free. Maybe I'll put a tuck spot on those, or maybe I'll just put a photo on or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. Pop that one down. And then this one I better go on here. Oh, so 
much glue just came out of there. And off of there and there as well. Put a little pocket on here. This is a great project for using up all your little scraps too. Put this one in the middle. I wonder if it goes off a certain way. I can't I can't tell. Don't you just love tiny things? Okay. Little belly band. And one little corner pocket. Pop that on there. Done. One and done. That's it. So now all I have to do is decorate it and put some little inserts in. So let's fold her up so you can see that's what it looks like at the moment. I feel like I might need to put some more. Um, I'll do that later. So I have got this little butterfly charm that I'm thinking is going to somehow form the basis of my front cover. But I haven't decided for sure yet. So I do have that one. I might even put some alcohol ink on it or something like that I don't know but anyway that's my idea and I'll come back to that later um, but that's our little accordion book so it opens up um, this way and we've got all those little pockets on here and then oops this way and I've got all these little pockets on here so quick and easy slide it all together now let me just show you um, so while I was gone I have um, constructed the lid and I have also matted the whole lid um, and I just wanted to show you how I did that uh, and I thought I would demonstrate on the bottom so I've already put the mat on the inside here and on the outside because there's nothing to that I really just wanted to show you how I do the in the um, the edges okay so for the outside, I find it easier to um, join the two mats together. So we need four of these mats and I'll put everything in the description box so you um, don't have to worry about thinking about it. So for this one, I need two mats. Um, so I'll take these two for the outside. So for the outside, I like to join them together. So I'll just grab a little bit of glue and I'm just gonna put some glue on here. And I'm just going to join those two together like so. Make sure they're lined up pretty good. And then I'm just going to put some glue on the edge. Now I like to start on the side again, just so you don't see that seam on the front or, um, of our um, little tin, our little faux tin. And I just put some glue around here. I'm trying to not use too much but also use enough might use my uh, my specialized tool for the job my finger so this is going to get messy <laughs> okay just put some glue around there I don't know <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this differently. I don't usually put glue all the way around to start with, so I don't know why I'm suddenly doing it like that. But anyway, get the glue off my finger. So then just starting on the side, I'm just going to line this up where I want it. And stick it down. And then just pull it around nice and tight. Trying to keep some kind of a line, you know, as best you can. Oh, see now that's why you don't, why I didn't put the glue around it <laughs> last time. Okay, so then I'm just pulling it around again and again and I want to make sure that it sticks really well. 
And then I might need to put a bit of glue on this little last end piece here and just slide it together like so. Then just give it a rub, make sure it's really well stuck down all the way around. And you might want to use your bone folder and give it a bit of a polish. Make sure it's stuck down. And so one thing that I didn't mention, which I should have done, is if um, before I um, did that, what I, uh, I did was I took my little emery board and I went around the, the edge uh, around here and just knocked off any um, little bits of um, the cardstock that I wasn't very happy with. So I just went around it with my emery board really lightly and then when I was happy with that, then I just went around with my, with my um, Distress inker and inked it up so that it looked a little bit neater. And that is the uh, outside done. So I, I highly recommend just going around and getting off any of those little bits that might be sticking out with your emery board just really lightly. So to attach the ones to the inside, I find it easy to do two separate pieces one at a time. And I might use this glue because this just gives me a little bit more time to move my, my piece of paper around. So I just put some glue on here. I probably should have used this glue for the outside too. I don't know why I didn't. This glue just gives you a little bit more wiggle time. So um, you use the glue you like because I'm in Australia. We don't have all the groovy stuff that everyone can get everywhere else. So again, I'm going to start on the side with my little, my little arrow, my little tab, and I'm just going to slide in there and I'm really trying to pay particular attention to getting it to stick in this little corner here it's really tricky sometimes to get to get it to stick in there and then I'm just going to stick it down make sure it's well stuck particularly on those corners if you can so that's that one done and then for this second one I tend to just top chop off this little tab here, I might put a little ink on the end, and then I'll do the same thing. No, I'm using this glue. Got so many glues going on here. Okay, so I'm just gonna put some glue on here. Well, I mean, you do this the way that you prefer to do. I just thought I'd show you. I've made a few, and this is how um, I was finding it easiest to do. So this time I'm going to line this one up on top of that little tab. I'm going to try. I'm going the opposite way than what I normally would. And then just slide that in and around. And then join up with the other side and then, whoops, don't do that. <laughs> Don't do what I just did. Okay. Just wanted to smooth it down. Make sure it's stuck in those corners so it doesn't get stuck on anything. And that is it. Now, to tr you might need to train it into shape a little bit. It might look a little bit funny. When you first put it together, it's kind of a bit wobbly all over the place. So the way that I found to do that is just to use my bone folder and just put it on put it the flat section on the um, tabletop on your desk and then just rub your bone folder on the inside back and forward like so just to help it get nice and straight and the same on this side like so and then just doing those short sides if you can as well remembering that that's where all our seams are so it could be a bit tricky and this just really helps to, to get our, um, need a bit of extra glue on there, I think. I'll just be careful for now. It just helps to get our um, shape right. Okay, so that looks nice and rectangular. And I'll just do the same on this one. So for this top one, you'll notice on the inside edge, I haven't put a mat 
Now, I could, and I have in some of them, but I find that it's probably best not to. It just opens really nice and easily without that extra little bit of bulk in there. So, But if you find that um, you've got plenty of room, it, or if you want to, by all means go ahead and use that same mat from the outside here um, on the inside. Okay, so I'm just, then I'm just going to run around here. Same as I did for the bottom. And there. And then, hopefully, it should go on. Now, it might need a little bit of, um, might need to start with a little bit of, see, I don't want to push it down too hard while my um, mats are, haven't dried on the outside, but, because um, I don't want to disturb them. It also goes in easier. There we go. Just needed a little bit of yeah, look at that. So cute. So cute. So on these ones here, I actually sprayed the outside with a little bit of matte um, sealer. Um, I used the Mod Podge matte spray and it, it makes it feel really nice, but also makes it sound a bit harder and sort of protects it a bit more. I'm thinking with this one though, that I might spray it with some of this gloss spray. Now this is just one that I've, I've never bought it before. It's just from our local Kmart. You use whatever gloss spray you want. I'm, I'm wondering how this will look in gloss. So I'm thinking I might give that a go. But what I will do is I'll spray it before I put on my little hinges. So instead of showing you how these little hinges go on, I thought I would just show you what I've already done. So I've already done it on this one. So all I've done is put a little glue on one half of my hinge and then decided where I want to put it and line it up on the on this bottom section and glue it into place with the lid on. Okay, so it's, it's like that. I would glue it down just on that bottom section there and I'll do the same for this one. Then when it's dry, I'll put a little bit of glue on here and then I would flip it over and hold it down into place until it caught and then I would leave that to dry as well. And that's it, that's all that I would do to do those little hinges. Um, I thought they might look nice if you, um, maybe you could emboss them, make them look a little bit like actual metal. Uh, you could use some silver or copper or some kind of metallic and, and make them look like little hinges. But that's it, that's how we've done it. So what I'll do now is I'm just gonna go away, I might do some, I might um, finish embellishing this little guy and I will finish embellishing this and um, at, give it a spray and attach the hinges and I'll show you in a minute. The other thing is right at the end of this video, I'm just gonna put some information about um, how to upload the SVG files to Cricut Design Space in case you'd like to do that. I thought I'd just leave it till the end because it's boring for those people who might prefer to get their um, printable templates and do it themselves. All right, so I'll be back shortly. I'll show you what it looks like when I've finished. Okay, bye for now. Okay, I'm back and I have finished embellishing my little um, Altoid box or my little faux Altoid tin. And I thought I would just show you how it looks when it's finished. So I use Graphics Fairy for this one and I just put a little bit of, um, it's like glossy accents, but it's Mod Podge dimensional. Um, it's easier for me to get here in Australia. So I've put that on the butterfly on the top and some stickles on those little bits there. And I thought that looks cute. It might still be a little bit wet, so I'm, I don't want to touch it. Um, I sprayed the whole thing with a gloss spray. I'm not sure that the gloss is all that much different from the matte. So, um, yeah, May I only did one coat, so maybe if I did more coats it would be glossier, but I'm happy with it. Um, I've put the hinges on the back and it's um, matted all the way around. It's so stinking cute. Okay, so then we open it up and um, we've got so this has gone a little bit funny here, I've just noticed. That would be from the dimensional Mod Podge, but never mind, I can cover that up with something. And then inside here I have my little accordion book. So let's just pull that little guy out so I can show you what it looks like. I'll just tuck that in there. So I've just tied it up the seam binding 
and I have just put this little this little butterfly charm on it. I was going to change the colour with some alcohol inks, but then I just decided to go with silver. I thought it looked nice. So I'm just holding it closed with a little bit of cream seam binding. And then it opens up like this, this way. And there's another one. So we've put all of those little pockets and things in. So I've just filled up all the little pockets with um, little tags and um, this is all from the graphics fairy. I used um, some of the printable um, papers that she um, that you can get from the graphics fairy and then I used um, a lot of the purple ephemera from the purple ephemera bundle and I just downsized it to make it really tiny. That's just a stamp. Um, so doesn't that look cute? I made a little booklet here. I'm just you can open it up you could put something in there. Oops, I haven't, but you could. <laughs> um, um, I, with a little scrap of paper, I just made some teensy little envelopes and I've just popped that on this little postcard and that can just slide in here. I think I put the paper clip on top. So, somehow. There we go. And that just slides under that little belly band. And then we have just got some little bits and pieces in all of the pockets and then on the back is the same kind of thing. So some more little tags with some tiny little little inserts. I mean this is just for fun and oh my goodness it was so much fun. <laughs> it's another one of those little books. Um, I've put, oh I've stuck that in there. It's a postcard and I've just used that little tiny attacher to attach that um, bigger postage stamp so that just slides in there and I've just made a little tuck spot with um, a little picture there so yeah I think it's gorgeous I had so much fun making it and it's a fabulous way to use up all your scraps and um, I just love the little the little box so I think in this little box I could fit um, a gift voucher um, or I could use it like these Tracy Fox ones so these tops here from Tracy Fox and um, I could put eyelets in that one and paper fasteners and safety pins in that one too super easy to make great way to use up scraps and I don't know I just love a little box so it was super fun <laughs> and um, and a good alternative to you know having to buy a tin which I it was hard for me to to source so that's those little guys there um the printable templates and the svg file are both available in my etsy store so um i'll put the link in the description box below um by all means check them out otherwise right now following this will be a little demo on how to upload the svg file for those people who are interested otherwise i'll see you guys again soon thanks for your time today bye bye Okay guys, here I am at my computer and I just wanted to give you a quick little demonstration of how to upload the Altoid Tint and Accordion Book SVG files from your computer into Cricut Design Space. So when I download things from Etsy, it usually comes into my downloads folder, which is where I am now. So as you can see up here, it says this PC downloads. And this is the uh, zipped folder that I've downloaded from Etsy. So the first thing I need to do is double click on that. And you can see that there are two files in there. One is the SVG file, which we need to upload to Cricut Design Space. And then one is a PDF guide. So let's click on Extract All. So it's selected the folder that it's going to put those into from the, unzip um, from the zipped folder. So I'll just click Extract. And now we're in the um, folder that's been unzipped. So first of all, let's have a look at the second PDF guide. So I'll double click on that. And it's opened on my other screen. So I'm just going to drag it over here so you can see it. So this is just a, a quick three page um, guide on the SVG file itself. So it just talks about um, changing the score lines, uh, the cutting lines to score lines, which is what we're going to do. There's a link to actually what will be this video, um, a little word about sizing and about rotating the objects on the canvas. 
There's a link here to this playlist, Super Quick and Easy SVG Projects, which is where you'll find this video. And if I do any more um, videos on this Altoid tin, I'll probably put them in here. And then this is just a screenshot of the actual file itself so that it um, this one's got the writing on it so that you can see what each of the pieces are because I can't put that writing in the SVG file. So you can print out this guide if you want to or just keep it on the computer, it's up to you. So that's the um, guide. Now we need to head on over to Cricut Design Space. So I'll just head over there and we need to upload that file. So I'm just going to click on Upload and then Upload Image and then Browse. And it's taken me to that folder that we were just in that we've unzipped. So I'm going to click on that first one, our toy tin and accordion book. If I double click on that, it will bring that up and I can see the file there. And it's got the name our toy tin and accordion book. Um, fabulous. So I'll click save. So then I'm going to click on that image and click insert images and bring it into the Cricut design space. And it's all in one group. So I'm just going to move it up here. And I'm, um, the first thing I need to do is ungroup it so that we can work with it. So what we need to do is change these internal lines in here from cut. Well, they're currently cut lines. And we need to change these lines here on all of these little pieces to um, score lines. So let's start with these little side pieces here. I'm going to click on the blue piece. And if I go over to my layers panel over here, you can see it's got that blue piece highlighted and also these cutting lines. So I'm going to click on those cut lines. And I'm going to come up here to line type up at the left and click on that drop down menu and change it from cut to score. So as soon as I do that, you should be able to see here that those lines have become dashed lines now. So I know that they're score lines now. But I do need to still attach them. So I'm going to click on that whole piece again. Not on the not on the pink piece, not on the matte, just on the blue piece. And if we go back over to the layers panel, you can see that it's highlighted that piece and those score lines. So then I'm going to come down here and click attach. And when I click attach, you'll see that it, it has attached those score lines to that blue piece, but we can't see the pink matte anymore. So if I click on this piece with my right mouse and click center back, now I can see that mat sitting on top there as well and I want to keep it there so I can see it. Then I'm just going to select both the mat and that piece where we've just put the score lines in and click group. And that's just to keep things neat. So I'm just going to do the same for this one here. So I'm going to come over here, click on the cut lines, go up to line type, click score. Then I'm going to click on this whole little piece here from this arrow down. So those score lines and the actual blue piece itself. And then I'm going to click attach. I am going to right click and say send back. Click off it and then select both of those pieces and click group. Okay, now I don't need to do anything to these pieces here, but this one I do. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to come over here to the layers panel, click cut. Click on the cut lines, change them to score lines, click on that whole little piece and click attach. And then I'm going to right click and say center back. Click off it, select that and it's mat and click group. And it's just keeping things nice and organized. I'm going to do the same with this little hinge. I'm going to click on the cut lines, change them to score, click attach. And this time I don't need to send them to back because it doesn't have a mat. I'm also going to do it for all these little pockets. So I'm going to change those cut lines to score lines and click attach, send it back, group it. And I like to do this grouping because it just, it keeps everything together. Then your, um, your mats don't um, run away and get lost in the confusion of all the little pieces that you've got going on on your screen. So then I can click group. And then I just need to do the same for these. Click score, click attach, send back. Might need to move that little guy aside. Whoops. Come back there. Something like that. I come from the, oh, I can't do it. I'm trying to 
I keep picking that piece up when I don't want to. Okay, now I'm going to click group. I'll do the same for this one. Change those cut lines to score lines. Click the whole thing, click attach, send it to the back. Whoops, send to back. And then I'm going to highlight those together, and click group. Got three more, two more to go. Cut, but you know, once you've done it once, you don't have to do it again. It is, uh, if you save it as a project, then um, you know, one, it's one and done. Group, I'm just going to move this guy out of the way so I can get to this one. Click cut, click score, click attach, send back, and then group. Okay, so now I've got all of that organized. Um, the only thing I want to do now is I'm going to um, set it out so that it's all ready to cut. So some pieces need duplicating. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this guy up over here because he belongs to my accordion book. So I'm just going to keep that separate from the tin. The same with this insert down here. I'm going to bring him over here. I'm going to do the same with all of these pockets. So let's pick up all those pockets. And this one here. You missed this guy. Don't forget the belly band. Okay. I'm going to select all of those and I'm going to move those over here for a second. We'll sort those out later. Now, this is the um, pieces that we need for our um, tin, and we need to have two of each of these. So I'm going to select those and click duplicate, and then I'll bring them down here so that they're all ready to cut. I need two of the hinges, so I'm going to click duplicate, and then I'll put those guys together here. And I also need two of these guys here. So I'm going to highlight those two and click duplicate. Okay, I might just move my little, little hinges out the way and put this, pop these two over here. Then I'll pick up my little hinges and put them there. Let's just make this a bit smaller. So that's everything I need now for my tin. So I'm just going to select that whole thing and group it together. And I just find it much easier to deal with things like that. So that's um, one little group for the tin. And then we just have this second group here. Maybe I'll maybe I'll arrange it a bit more, put this guy down here. And then um, I'm just going to select all of those pieces together because they're the pieces that I'm going to use for my accordion book. And I'm going to click group. Now, if when I make my accordion book, I cut out two of um, each of the pieces so all I would do is click click um, on that group and say duplicate and um, I have two pieces now you'll notice that um, these guys here have tabs only on one side and this little um, corner pocket is facing one direction uh, I would like to have it so I have these pockets facing in the opposite direction and also this little corner guy in the opposite direction. So for this group, I'm just going to flip the whole thing over horizontally. So now I have all my pockets organized and I have two of these um, accordion things. And so my, um, my accordion book is all ready to go, all the pieces that I want to cut out. And my tin is all ready to go with all the pieces that I want to cut out. So now I'm going to click on save. And I'm going to call it Altoid, Altoid Tin and Accordion Book and click Save. And now my project is ready. I don't need to make any changes to it whatsoever. Um, so whenever I want to make that Altoid Tin, I can just open up this project and off I go. So I just wanted to spend a minute showing you how to do that. I hope that really helps. Um, I love making this little Altoid Tin. It's so much fun. So I hope you have a go. Thanks very much. Bye.